Shalom, Mubaraka, Mispaka, peace and blessings, family. Woe to the land shadowing with wings, which is beyond the rivers of Cush. Where is the land shadowing with wings that is beyond the rivers of Cush? What area on earth has the most birds? What area on earth is literally shaped like the wing of a bird? South America is home to more birds than any other place on this earth. Even Colombia itself has 16.5% of all the birds on the earth. You got the parrots, the macaws. Over here in the Andes, they got the condor. And over here, they got one of the largest eagles on the earth. The largest bird to ever fly is the condor. We already know about the parakeets and macaws. We already know about the toucans. It's, it's a lot going on in this area, right? A lot of birds. It's a land shadowing with wings. Now, Africa as well. We know that Africa is a part of Kush as well. Both of these guys are related. They are one. Before the Gihon River broke into a sea during the time of Peleg, during a generation of Peleg is when the earth divided itself. Before that, in Yah's perfect creation, everything was one continent, and therefore all nations were one people. They all spoke one language and they lived in the land of Babel. But they unified to do something evil, to rebel against Yahuwah of hosts and build a tower to heaven. Yahuwah scattered all people across the earth. The children of Cush dwelt here along the Gihon River, which was connecting both South America to Africa. But during the generation of Peleg, which came many years afterward, while the civilizations of Cush grew and increased on both sides of the river, then Yahuwah divided the world. And boom, one part of Cush moved toward the west and one part of Cush moved toward the east. And now you have a division of the nation of Cush. One stayed in South America, one stayed into Africa, spreading itself toward the east, all the way until we get to Aksum or Abyssinia. This land has the largest river on earth, which is the Amazon. And this land once was connecting to the Amazon was the Congo River, which is one of the largest rivers on earth as well, and the deepest river on earth. They are once connected. In fact, the scientists tell you, now the Amazon River flows from the west to the east, but it used to flow from the east to the west, why? Because it used to be coming from the Gaihan. The Gaihan River used to be flowing outward this way. Same thing with the Congo, it used to flow out this way. So, let's continue to read. Now I said, first of all, I said, whoa, to the land shadow with me. That means destruction will come to Kush. Destruction will come to Kush. Why? Why would destruction come to Kush? Let's continue reading. It says, that sendeth ambassadors by the sea, even in ves vessels of bull rushes upon the water, saying, go ye swift messengers to a nation scattered and peeled, to a people terrible from their beginning hitherto, a nation met it out and trodden down whose land the rivers have spoiled. So these people, these Cushites, are trying to send messengers out into the sea, ambassadors out into the sea, and they're trying to do something to that nation. Maybe just to engage a simple trade with the nation, maybe to take slaves from the nation, or maybe even to spy on that nation to uh, go to war against that nation. But see, what it looks like is, it's, it's seen that that nation, whatever nation it is, is in a low state uh, currently. It says, a nation scattered and peeled. So, as you can see, they're scattered. They're not anymore unified. They have no order, they have no rank. To a people terrible from the beginning hitherto. Well, this is a nation terrible, meaning it's a nation of fierce countenance. However, during its current times, even though it's been 
a nation of fierce countenance feared everywhere around the world, now scattered and peeled. A nation met it out and trodden down. So now this nation has been trodden down by other peoples, right? Now this nation has been conquered by other peoples. It's been trodden down by other peoples whose land the rivers have spoiled and even the natural state of the land, the rivers itself have turned on the civilians of this area. The rivers are against the people of this area. But these Kushites are saying, hey, let's go to that nation. Let's go to that nation. They're in such a bad state. They've been conquered by another people. The rivers have turned on them. The rivers have did something to them. You know, I can't tell you right now what the rivers have done, but the rivers in this land have done something to this people. The nation is trodden down. The nation is scattered. It's in such a low state. Let's go to this people. Why would they go to that people? Do you think they're still trying to engage in trade? No, because the people are not prosperous. You don't trade with a non-prosperous nation. You think they're trying to go to war against the people? Possibly. Do you think they're trying to enslave those people? That seems like the most logical explanation. They're, seeing, they're sending messengers to that nation, spies to that nation, to see the lowest state of that nation. So that eventually they could go to war with that nation and take captives. That's what Kush is doing. That's why I said, whoa, to them. Because you're trying to knock somebody down who's already low. You're trying to knock somebody down who's already been destroyed. But who is this nation that's been destroyed? Who is this nation that's low? Who is this nation that's scattered and peeled? We'll find out when we continue reading. All ye inhabitants of the world and dwellers of the earth, see ye when he lifted up an ensign on the mountains, and when he bloweth a trumpet, hear ye. For Yahuwah said unto me, I will take my rest, and I will consider in my dwelling place like a clear heat upon herbs, and like a cloud of dew in the heat of harvest. For afore the harvest, when the bud is good, and the sour grape is ripening, in the flower, he shall both cut off the sprigs with pruning hooks and take away and cut down the branches. And they shall be left together unto the fowls of the mountains and to the beasts of the earth and to the fowls and the fowls shall summer upon them and the beast of the earth shall winter upon them. And, okay. Yahuwah said he's going to cut off this nation, they're trying to enslave this people. Whatever people it is, Kush is trying to enslave this people. Before their harvest, Yah is going to cut them off. He's going to leave them slain upon the mountains. He's going to leave them in a low position. It said, it said the, the, the fowls of heaven will eat their dead bodies and the wild animals of the field will as well. Now, they send ambassadors into the sea. We have to understand that both South America and Africa for 5,000 years have been a seafaring people traveling the world on ship. South America and Africa, when they divided, they kept into contact. They were still unified when they divided. The most recent we know happened about 300 years before Columbus, Abu Bakari of, Ma of the Malian Empire sent ships to Brazil, right? That's the most recent, but they've been doing that pre many years previous. For 5,000 years, both South, Af South America and Africa have been talking, communing in, you know, one nation. They've been in trade. See, this is along the Gaihan River. They knew this as the Gaihan River. That's why in Africa, you have something called Ghana. You have Gambia. You have, Ga you have uh, Guinea. And then in South America, you have what? Guyana. You have a whole bunch of tribes that correlate to the etymology of the word Gaihan on both sides of the Gaihan River. They knew that this is the Gaihan River. They just, if you ever watched um, Roots, which is not really 100% historically accurate, but when the slaves crossed the Atlantic, they called the Atlantic the Great River. They knew Kunta Kinte called this the Great River. 
when he crossed on ship. So this is a river and they knew this as the river. In that time shall the present be brought unto Yahuwah of hosts of a people scattered and peeled and from a people terrible from their beginning hitherto, a nation meddling down and trodden underfoot whose land the rivers have spoiled to the place of the name of Yahuwah of hosts, the Mount Zion. So Yahuwah is now saying that nation that is scattered and peeled, that nation that is trodden underfoot, that nation who the rivers have spoiled, guess what? A present will be brought to me from those people. So whatever nation this is talking about, though that nation will will go to Mount Zion, that nation will be Yah's people. So do you think this is talking about Israel? Do you think the Cushites have been trying to enslave and take advantage of Israelites? And that's why Yahuwah will punish, punish them like this. Because if you look at South America, when the white man came over to South America, the white man seen flourishing cities all along the Amazon River, huge kingdoms. Literally, the most advanced kingdoms the white man has ever seen. He was so uh, surprised when he came. See, from Spain, they came down the coast of Africa, and they followed this current into the Amazon. And when they followed along the Amazon River, they seen the most beautiful and bountiful kingdoms that they could lay eye upon. But their second travel, they followed the current. They came along into the Amazon. All these empires were gone. Everything was empty. There were no more people. And the people that they did see were wild, cannibals, flesh-eating humans. For everybody was gone in this area. It was desolation. They say it's because of smallpox. When the European made contact with these tribes, the smallpox um, scattered around this entire region and everybody died. But I don't know. Why didn't that happen to the Incas? It only happened to the Brazilian? Who knows? Um, I don't know if it was smallpox or I don't know if it was just simply the vengeance of Yahuwah host. There was Negroes in this area in Kush. In fact, I can show you a map that's, that calls this sea, the Sea of Kush, or the Sea of Ethiopia, Mar Ethiopia. And it has a picture of two Negroes. One looks like a Moor, and one looks like an American Aborigine. And they're both black. I can show you many ancient depictions of black peoples who dwelt all in South America as well. These people literally were cursed in the same fashion that Yah said he would curse Cush. Let's look at chapter 19. You have to understand that 18 and 19 used to be connected. It was one long prophecy. But when the translators seen it, they divided it because they thought it was a new clause. But it's not. Isaiah chapter 19 verse 1. The burden of Mizraim, behold, Yahuwah rideth upon a swift cloud and shall come into Mizraim and the idols of Mizraim shall be moved at his presence and the heart of Mizraim shall melt in the midst of it and I will set the Mitzries against the Mitzries and they shall fight every one against his brother and every one against his neighbor a city against city and kingdom against kingdom so now, now Yahuwah of hosts is setting a declaration of punishment upon Mizraim. But why? Did Mizraim also mess with this nation who's been trodden down and met it out and scattered whose land the rivers have spoiled? Or is Mizraim that nation itself? Let's continue to read. So what, what is Yah declaring upon the Mitzvahs? He's saying basically they're going to be divided. 
they're going to be divided kingdom against kingdom Mizraim is so large it has multiple kingdoms it said basically Egypt will be divided Egypt will be divided amongst itself and then it says I really hope you guys can see the words that I'm showing you the spirit of Mizraim shall fall in the midst thereof and I will destroy the council thereof and they shall seek to the idols and to the charmers and to them that have familiar spirits and to wizards and Mizraim will I give over into the hand of a cruel lord and a fierce king shall rule over them saith Yahuwah of hosts so after Mizraim has become divided amongst itself Yahuwah of hosts says he will set over them into the hand of a cruel lord who is that that is that is babylon babylon came against mizraim after he came from the north and afflicted judah he went directly to mizraim there was a series of war campaigns before he went to uh judah he actually made war against mizraim his scripture says in second kings the king of babylon conquered all the land from the euphrates to the river of egypt all the land that pertained to Pharaoh, king of Egypt. But in the Middle East, the Euphrates to the river of Egypt is actually supposed to be Israel. In order to make it work, scripture says that our land will be from the great sea to the river of Egypt to the Euphrates. That's how it works. But in the Middle East, we have from the river of Egypt to the great sea, to the Euphrates but here's the dilemma because in the book of Kings it says clearly that Babylon conquered all the land of Egypt from the Euphrates to the Nile well to the river of Egypt right which is now called the Nile which has nothing to do with Mizraim it conquered all this area right here but it said all this area but will pertain to Pharaoh so that means Israel as well pertain to Pharaoh which doesn't make sense but it makes perfect sense from here, from the Euphrates to the river of Egypt, which is the Colorado, from the Mississippi to the Colorado, all this belonged to Pharaoh. Guess what? Babel conquered this before he conquered Judah. And then after that, Mizraim still didn't pay tribute to Babylon. So then what happened? Judah didn't pay tribute to Babylon either, neither did they surrender to Babylon's army. So then what happened is Babylon came from the north, laid swift desolation to Judah, swift desolation to Jerusalem. But he turned not again. He didn't go back to Babylon. He went further south, completely laid waste to the treasure cities of Egypt. He took all this land. He took thousands upon thousands captive up north, bringing them to Babylon. He set over Mizraim a fierce king, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of the host of the Babylonian Empire. He set over them a very cruel king. Thus, scripture was fulfilled, prophecy was fulfilled. The king of Babylon ruled over Mizraim from henceforth. So now, not only is Mizraim divided amongst itself, it has been trodden down and meted out by the Babylonians. And then it's been scattered far away from their border and brought to Babylon. So these people are looking pretty scattered. They're looking pretty trodden down on the foot. They're looking pretty meted out. Let's continue reading. And the water shall fail from the sea and the river shall be wasted and dried up. And they shall turn the rivers far away and the brooks of defense will be emptied and dried up. And the reeds and flags shall wither. So now it says the river of Egypt will dry up. So now what's going on? Not only is this nation trodden down and meted out, not only is this nation divided and scattered, but now the river is spoiling Mizraim, just like it said, Cush tried to enslave these people. So it looks like Mizraim is that nation. It looks like Mizraim is that nation that Cush was trying to enslave. But let's, let's continue to read. 
because it says some very interesting things about the river of Mizraim, also known as the Colorado River. It says some very interesting things. Let's, let's read it. The paper reads by the brooks shall wither be driven away and no more. So it said basically all the plant growth by the river will wither away. They won't grow anymore. Now, I want you to understand that when a river, every river needs, you know, support. And that support is its banks. If the river has weak banks, the soil around the river will collapse into what is known as a canyon. But what keeps the riverbanks strong? Plants. Plants grow along the river and provide structure to the soil by keeping the roots into the soil and keeping everything intact. Now, once those roots have basically been diminished from the soil and the trees and flags and all the, you know, papyrus that once grew along the Colorado River, once that all dries up, now the soil along the banks of the river has been has became weak and brittle and the rushing water simply push down further and further into the earth because the soil is now weak it's become sand therefore a canyon forms this is how the river of Mizraim became the Grand Canyon because all the plants that grew along the river has failed. It has died. It shriveled up. It withered away. And now it's become what's known today as the Grand Canyon. Did this happen to the Nilos River? Do I see the same thing in Egypticus and Aksum? No. For the rivers from Alexandria all the way down to Aksum is abundantly fruitful. All forms of trees and plants grow therein. In fact, in this area right here, this is where most Egyptians live. It's the greenest place on earth for a 1,000 mile radius in this entire area. So this does not fit prophecy. Let's continue to read. The paper reads by the brooks by the mouth of the brooks and everything sown by the brooks shall wither be driven away and be no more even the papyrus the paper reads the papyrus we still got papyrus growing all along the nile we also have papyrus growing you know in central america but papyrus used to grow here as well but it's gone it said everything sown by the brooks Every, all the beautiful plants of Goshen in the treasure cities of Mizraim has been withered away, it's been dried up. Everything by the river has been dried up. This is agriculture farmland, so that don't fit prophecy. You know, but in America, it fits prophecy. So when we continue to read, this is what we see. The fishers also shall mourn, and all they that cast angle into the brook shall lament, and they that spread nets upon the waters shall languish. Moreover, they that work and find flax, and they that weave networks shall be confounded. So now what is Yah saying? He's saying all the fishermen who used to get fish from the river of Mizraim shall mourn they shall lament they shall languish why because they cannot cast net into a river that has become a canyon how do you cast a fishing net into a deep ass canyon you can't therefore they cannot provide fish to their family they cannot live anymore fishing is a booming industry along along the nile river and they shall be broken in the purposes thereof all that make sluices and ponds for fish surely the princes of Zoan are fools and the council of the wise counselors of pharaoh is become brutish how say ye unto pharaoh i am the son of the wise 
and the son of ancient kings? Where are they? Where are thy wise men? And let them tell thee now, and let them know what Yahuwah of hosts have purposed upon Mizraim. The princes of Zoan are become fools. The princes of Noph are deceived. They have seduced Mizraim, even they that are the stay of the tribes thereof. Yahuwah hath mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof, and they have caused Mizraim to err in every work thereof, as a drunken man staggereth in his vomit. And neither shall there be any work for Mizraim, which the head or the tail, branch or rush may do. In that day shall Mizraim be like unto woman, and it shall be afraid and fear because of the shaking of the hand of Yahuwah of hosts, which shaketh over it. So it said, there shall be no work in Mizraim because the land has become desolate, because the land has dried up, because Babylon has taken it, because it's divided, because it's scattered, because it's trodden under foot. All these plagues have came upon it. Think about just the river itself drying up. Think about how many jobs that took away. First of all, there's no more papyrus, meaning there's there, no more books can be written. So documentations, blueprints of buildings, that's gone out the window. That's gone. The fish, you can't fish anymore. That's gone. So that industry is out of there. The agriculture industry, that's gone. All the plants by the river, out of there. The cattle no more roam the land. There's no more water to drink. That's out of there. So agriculture in general is dead. They grew all kinds of barley and flax along the river. So making clothing is out of there. There's no more wool. The sheep have died for lack of water. All kinds of jobs have left Mizraim. Now their only, their only option is to migrate. Let's continue to read. And the land of Judah shall be a terror unto Mizraim. Everyone that maketh mention thereof shall be afraid in itself because of the counsel of Yahuwah of hosts, which he have determined against it. In that day shall five cities of the land of Mizraim speak the language of Canaan and swear unto Yahuwah of hosts. One shall be called the city of destruction. Now, this is what I want to point out. It said in that day, so in a later time, Mizraim will have five cities in it that will speak the Canaanite language. Now, why would that even happen? Because Canaanites had a mass migration into Mizraim. But not in this part of Mizraim, because this part of Mizraim, which was the most abundant part of Mizraim at one point, is now waste desolate. So a lot of the Mizraim, a lot of Mizraim moved toward the south, toward the east. Right? So with that being said, with that being said, since they a lot of them migrated, the Canaanites did as well, because this area became dry as well, because of the sins of Yasserol. And Yasserol migrated eventually, migrated toward the southeast, right, all along this area. In fact, the Indians whom uh, James Adir who was a, you know, basically a, a a a a historian who wanted to know about all the tribes of the of the eastern part of North America. He interviewed these tribes and they said that their ancestors came from this area right here, and they moved east. Even the Cherokee, as well as the Choctaw, have oral history of them crossing the Mississippi into this land. Why is there, is there five cities? First of all, we got to understand all of this is out of there. Nobody lives here anymore at this time. This whole area is desert. Nobody lives here anymore. No Egyptians. So all the Egyptians live toward the south, where the, wherever it's green, everywhere where it's green. Right. And they live around the Mississippi. Around the mound builders of Assyria. But they don't live here anymore because this area is desert. They moved from out of that area. So. 
we're either going to talk about five C's right here or five cities right here. But let me just go ahead and tell you right now. It's right here, all right? The city of destruction is right here. The Aztecs. The Aztecs was a nation of mingled, a mingled nation between the children of Mizraim and the children of Canaan. The Aztec language is similar both to that of the Mizraim language and the Canaanite language. They have practices that can be tra tra traced back to that of Canaanite practice. And they are related to the Mayans, and the Mayans are pure Mizraim descendants. Because the Mayans spoke hieratic Egyptian. Just like we can find artifacts in Iowa of hieratic Egyptian, because the Egyptians were scattered. Now, Canaan is a very close language to that of Mizraim. And the, and the Aztecs spoke both the languages of Mizraim and Canaan. And why did it say one of the cities shall be called the city of destruction? Well, the capital of the Aztecs was Tenochtitlan. I, I don't really know if I pronounced it 100% correctly, but um, and it was completely laid waste by the conquistadors, completely killed, completely laid waste. Literally, the human sacrifice that took place with these Canaanites, because we know nowhere on earth was human sacrifice a practice that carried on anywhere near the amount that carried on in the Americas? Because we know we read about human sacrifice all throughout scripture. Because we started doing it because we've seen the Canaanites do it, right? So here's the thing with that, right? You see that mostly with the Aztecs. So that's so, oh, and don't forget about the bloodletting. They believe that if you cut yourself, just like with the just like what the Canaanites were recorded to do, right? The Aztecs did the same practice as the Canaanites. They believe that if you cut yourself and let the blood seep to the earth, you are giving to the gods. You are giving a sacrifice to the gods. Just like what the doing if you read about what Elijah did, how he made fire rain from heaven, the Canaanites began to cut themselves and the blood gushed out on the earth, just like what the Aztecs do, what the Aztecs did. And the earth cried out. Mother Earth cried out for her children because the blood cried out unto heaven, unto Yahuwah. And and the earth could not handle the amount of bloodshed of her children. And Yahuwah had to do something about it. So therefore he sent Cortez, his servant, against Aztec. And what did he do? What did, what did, Cortez, what did Hernando Cortez do in the first year? He slew 3,000 of the Aztecs and he also killed Montezuma in the presence of the village during a ceremony where they were about to sacrifice 750 youths and right then and there the human sacrifice ended in that land um yeah but it said one of those cities will be called the city of destruction so let me stay on topic. I know, I know. Now, destruction in Hebrew is a word, you know, called haras. Haras. Now, if you look at an ancient map from, I believe, I don't really remember. I think it's from the 1500s of Mexico. There's a city right next to Mexico City or Tino to Lilan. Right next to that, there's a city called Hara, Hara, right next to it, there's a city called Hara, which is very similar to the Hebrew word Haras with an S. The only difference is the S. It's, it's, it's spelled Hara with a J, but we know in Spanish, we know in Spanish, J is pronounced Ha. So this city was pronounced Hara, very similar to the Hebrew word Haras. That city was literally called destruction. The word destroy or destroyer in Hebrew is Horeb, like Mount Horeb, or Horeb, like the cherubim. Those are the, the destroying guardian angels. So all these words are connected. But let's continue reading because it, it starts to get very interesting, right? In 
that day there shall be an altar to Yahuwah in the midst of the land of Mizraim, and a pillar at the border thereof unto Yahuwah, and it shall be a sign and for a witness unto Yahuwah of hosts in the land of Mizraim, for they shall cry unto Yahuwah because of the oppressors, and he shall send them a savior and a great one, and he shall deliver them. Now, I hope you guys know that this is talking about right now. Hope you guys know that this is talking about right now. Because Mizraim is under oppressors. This whole area is under oppressors, right? Today. And what I want you to understand, those oppressors is now the white man. And in Mizraim, it said there will be an altar. In the midst at the border of Mizraim, there will be an altar. Unto Yahuwah. And they will cry. Unto Yahuwah because of the oppressors. Now, I didn't want to tell anybody what I did. But this is the truth. In the 22nd day of the second month, which is May... On this, it was the it was two days after the Sabbath, I believe. I was in a prayer and a meditation, and I fell asleep. And what I seen was, I was standing outside, and the sky was bright blue, but the sun was setting in the west. The sun was literally setting. I was like, why is the sky so bright blue if the sun is setting? So I looked toward the north, in the sky up high, toward the north. What do I see rising from the north? Yahuwah of hosts. He was a bright light, brighter than the sun, illuminating the sky and everything around him. All I saw was just this illuminous light from his from his thighs upward. I want you to imagine this. A semicircle rainbow was around him. And this rainbow was the most intense rainbow that I have, I have ever seen. And from the thigh downward was another semicircle of pure white light. And there was another ring around that ring, which I seen of pure white light. And there was another ring around that ring, which I seen of, it was a strip of darkness. And I seen this and I, I literally started praising Yahuwah folks. Cause I was fasting for seven days when I seen that vision. And, uh, it was, it was, it was, guys, if I'm lying, I'm dying. I, you already know how I feel about people who lie about y'all. If you lie about y'all, you know, I read you scriptures that said y'all will take everything away from you that he gave you. If you lie in his name, he will not leave anybody guilt, guiltless who takes his name in vain. I, if I'm lying, I'm dying. I'm telling, honest to God, truth. Everything I just said came out of my mouth. Facts. It was the body of like a man, but it was illuminated with bright light. And around him was a rainbow. I swear on everything I love. And so this is what I did, man. I had to. It's what you do. I had to. I, I built, I took four great stones that I got. I went to the beach and everything. I got some huge stones. I brought them to my yard and I put them up. I poured oil on it and I built an altar just like that. And every now and again, I go by the altar and I pray. And I tell y'all, you know, I pray to y'all to, re to re re relieve us from this captivity. And I did not see this scripture. I saw this scripture after that. I saw this scripture after that. I swear on everything I love. And I was like, whoa, because I live at the border of Mizraim. I live right next to Louisiana. Guys, I swear on everything I love, man. Like, I'm not lying, guys. I swear on everything I love. I put the most large crystals. I, I spent so much money, beautiful crystals, and I placed them all on top of the altar. I made sure I, I gave you who the, the most beautiful altar. And, uh, yeah, man, like, real talk. And that's why I pray. I cast my eyes in the direction of Jerusalem, north, north, northwest, and I pray to you who will host. And I feel a sense of 
you know, serenity. But guys, man, this is real talk. Like, like I know I seem crazy, but this is real talk. But anyway, it said he was seeing the Savior. Who was the Savior? That's David. That's King David. King David is coming, guys. And it says, And Yahuwah shall be known to Mizraim. And the misery shall know Yahuwah in that day. And shall do sacrifice and oblation. Yea, they shall vow a vow unto Yahuwah and perform it. That's because a lot of the people in this area today, and even in this area and all around, are the children, of, descendants of the children of Israel, black people who who we call ourselves Hebrew Israelites. We do, but you have to do your records. You you can't just say you're an Israelite just because you're black living in America. You have to go and and see your records, like I did. See if on your father's side. On your father's side, was there slaves? Go look at your father's lineage and see if your father's 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 lineage traced back to slaves. Because if it did not, that's why you got people like Dan Calloway saying slavery never happened. I mean, slavery did happen. It just didn't happen on a wide scale like you think. Slavery did not happen on a wide scale like you think. There was only a few slaves out of all black people. Because a lot of them were sovereign nations. A lot of blacks were sovereign nations, own tribes of people. All kinds of Moab and Ammon and all these other nations were in America, sovereign nations. Um, and Assyria and, and, and Mizraim as well, two, two major ones. But if your ancestors suffered the exact curse of Deuteronomy 28, then you are Israelite. So that's why you got to trace your records. Now, I'm an Israelite. I'm from the line of Aaron because Yahuwah of hosts, I prayed for it, and he, he showed me very many signs and, and visions. Showed me visions. For example, one of my visions I seen, uh, he, a man walked up to me and gave me the breastplate in my hand and said, wear it. And then another vision was, it was like ancient Israel. We was back in ancient Israel in the land, and I was making a burnt offering to Yahuwah over the altar, over the altar of burnt offering. And I slayed the sheep. We, we, we roasted over fire. I was I was the one that actually burned the sheep over the fire, so I had to be a priest. And uh, and when I did that, I gave some of the meat to my wife, but my wife is on her cycle in the in the in the dream, and I was put to death. They put me to death because I knew that I wasn't supposed to do that, but I did it anyway. And uh, yeah, like so maybe that was a vision that showed me that maybe my ancestors was doing this or maybe my past life I was doing that and that's something I need to know that I gotta do everything y'all tell me to do who knows but you know cause scripture says you cannot eat the holy meat unclean whoever does that shall be put to death and Yahuwah shall smite Mizraim and he shall smite and heal it and they shall return even to Yahuwah and he shall be entreated of them and shall heal them. So y'all said he's gonna smite Mizraim, but he's also gonna heal Mizraim, and Yahuwah is gonna, and, and the children of Mizraim are gonna serve Yahuwah. Wow. Let's continue to read. In that day, there shall be a highway out of Mizraim to Assyria, and the Assyria shall go into Mizraim, and the Misri into Assyria, and the Misri shall serve with the Assyrians. So say in that day, which is right now, like I said, there will be a highway out of Mizraim to Assyria. So what is that? Interstate 10, Interstate 10, Interstate 10. And the Misri shall go into Assyria and Assyria into Misri, right? So, but they're going to serve together. Both the Assyrians and the Mizraim are serving under the white man, just like today. If you don't think we're still in captivity, yes, we are. Both Mizraim and Assyria. Imagine Assyria being the strongest of all empires. Most warlike people now paying tri tribute taxes to the white man. Wow. That's like castration. And let me tell you, let me, this, is the, this is the scripture that will blow your blow your, your brains out. Right? In that day shall Yasra all be a third with Mizraim and with Assyria, even a blessing in the midst of the land. 
So it said in this day, Yasra will be a third. So that means only one third of blacks in this area is really Yasra. The rest is Mizraim and Assyria. But it said all of us will be a blessing in the land. No matter what race you are, if you're black and you live in this area, you are a blessing in the land. The Mizraim and the Assyrian, you are a blessing in the land. Look what it said. Look what it said. Look what it says, guys. This is crazy. Whom the Lord of hosts shall bless, saying, Blessed be Mizraim, my people, and Assyria, the work of mine hands, and Yasser, all my inheritance. So Yah is going to choose the Assyrians and Mizraim. He said, Blessed be Mizraim, my people. That means Yah is going to choose Mizraim to be his people as well as Assyria and israel so it's gonna have three nations three and why is that they went into captivity under the white man just like the children of yasser were all um they were introduced to the bible just like the children of yasser were all they were not introduced they were not forced into um chattel slavery like the children of yasser were all like generational slavery but they were made slaves but their slavery was not as bad. Neither was it generational like the children of Yasserol. But uh, they were made slaves and they were uh, converted into Christianity. Even the ones that were not made slaves, even in the uh, sovereign tribes, were still converted to Christianity. And later on, after slavery ended, when this social media stuff starts up, when this internet stuff is popular, when YouTube is popping, and the uh, the Hebrew Israelite movement is popping, all black people, no matter what nation they came from, are now a part of that movement, are now calling on y'all. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's why the children of Mizraim will start calling on y'all on that day. Do you understand? They don't even know they're the children of Israel. They think they're Israelites. But it's okay because it said that Yah will choose the children of Mizraim and the children of Assyria. So he's going to have three nations of his own. Not just Israel anymore, but also Mizraim and Assyria. And the reason being, I believe personally, I don't, you know, there's no scripture to, you know, say this. But I believe, I believe pers personally that because we all look alike, all three of these nations look alike. There's a lot of mixing between Yasra'al, Mizraim, and Assyria. So not all populations, but some populations of Yasra'al may just be completely mixed in with these nations. Therefore, by default, y'all would have to choose Assyria and Mizraim as well. And plus the fact that these nations are also calling on Yah and knowing Yah. So with that being said, it all makes sense when you think about it. The modern Egyptian and the modern Assyrian, which is the Iraqi, they don't give a F about Yah. They don't even know who Yah is. Neither did they ever know who Yah is. This only applies to the American blacks. This is the book of Ezekiel chapter 29 and verse 6. Let's continue to read and figure out exactly what happened to the children of Mizraim. We're going to go into their deep history that these people have. And it says in verse 6 that. And all the inhabitants of Mizraim shall know that I am Yahuwah. Because they have been a staff of reed to the house of Yasserol. That means imagine if you take a, uh, a reed like a cattail from the water and you make it into a staff and you lean on it and it cuts your hand right that's how Mizraim has been to Israel because when uh, Babylon was about to invade Judah Judah called Mizraim for help and Mizraim said yeah we finna help you they sent armies to Judah that was about to fight against Babylon for us but they turned back they like got your asses and they didn't even help us so they've been a staff of greed to the house of Yasser. And it says, 
when they took hold of thee by thy hand, thou didst break and rend all their shoulder. And when they leaned upon thee, thou breakest and madest their loins to be at a stand. Therefore thus saith Yahuwah Allah, Behold, I will bring a sword upon thee, and cut off man and beast out of thee, and cut off man and beast out of thee, and cut off man and beast out of thee. If you look at this area near the Colorado River slash Grand Canyon, you won't even see a bird flying in the sky over that land. However, over here, that area is literally packed with millions of people. Now, the only reason why you will see a human near the Grand Canyon is so they can hiss at the desolation of that area and be at awe over the destruction that Yahuwah of hosts has put on Mizraim. You know, they say, oh, this land is so beautiful. But in their heart, we're saying, wow, what happened to this place? It says, And the land of Mizraim shall be desolate and waste, and they shall know that I am Yahuwah, because he have said, The river is mine, and I have made it. Behold, therefore I am against thee and thy rivers, and I will make the land of Mizraim utterly waste and desolate from the tower of Cyan even unto the border of Cush, Migdal is the tower of Cyan, even unto the border of Cush, which is Pathros. There is a large strip of land around Mexico, which is completely desert, that nobody lives in to this day. There was ancient ruins. Actually, there is a era, there is a city called Magdalena in Mexico, right, in the middle of the desert, with the with the oldest, I swear, the oldest pyramid remains on Earth, the entire Earth, in Magdalena, Mexico in the middle of the desert and it's now buried under sand desert sand no foot of man shall pass through it neither nor the foot of beast shall pass through it neither shall it be inhabited 40 years why 40 years why 40 years because babylon took mizraim for 40 years and, and they were scattered out of the land. And then it says, uh, And I will make the land of Mizraim desolate in the midst of the countries that are desolate. And her cities among the cities that are laid waste shall be desolate forty years. And I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations and disperse them through the countries. That's because the Mizraim, they got scattered to Babylon. They got scattered along the uh, Euphrates among the the mound builders of Assyria and they got scattered south and into Cush. And we're going to talk about that uh, in a minute. Yet thus saith Yahuwah Allah, at the end of 40 years will I gather the mysteries from the people whether they were scattered and I will bring again the captivity of Mizraim. So even after the Babylonian captivity, he will bring again the captivity. So there'll be another captivity. Let's see who's going to take them captive this time. I will bring again the captivity of Mizraim and cause them to return into the land of Pathros, into the land of their habitation. Habitation means their origin, the place where they came from. And there they, they shall be a base kingdom. That means they will be the lowliest of all kings. They'll be the poorest of all people. And it shall be the based, basest of the kingdoms. Neither shall it exalt itself any more above the nations for I will diminish them, that they will no more rule over the nations. So y'all say he's going to make the Egyptians so poor that they will never rule again over the nations again. That literally happened. Let me explain. Egypt was scattered among the nations. And this is when the prophecy of Cush came into play. I hope you guys understand when you're reading prophecies, the prophecies are not in order. They're not in order. They're never in order. You have to understand the context. It's a beautiful piece of art and you have to be the artist. You have to have that puzzle piece putting together mentality when you read prophecy. So this is when the children of Cush come to play. They send ambassadors into the sea to a nation scattered and peeled. 
and people trodden down whose land the rivers have spoiled. These people, the poor people of Mizraim, they were scattered already. They were weak. They were cut off already as a nation. They were poor. They had they were they, were, they did not have any strength anymore at this time. So the children could say, Oh, let's take advantage of these people. We're gonna take them and capture as many as we can. First, I'm gonna send spies, I'm gonna send ambassadors, messengers to see see how they're doing. Then we're gonna send them slave ships. And, and we're gonna take them and we're gonna bring them to Pathros. Originally, Pathros was inhabited by the children of Mizraim. This was the original area of Mizraim, right? This was the original area of Mizraim, but when the children of Cush grew so abundantly, the children of Pathros moved to this area between two great rivers, the Euphrates and the river of Mizraim. And they were like a child being dandled in the arms of a mother in this land. The land was so fertile and rich. It was a place of bounty and beauty. And they said, this will be our land. And they flourished there for 3,000 years from the time of Abraham, even to the time of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. And they, they were a great nation from the beginning. No other nation rivaled them, except for the Assyrians when they were made low and the Babylonians when they were made high. So the children could say, let's enslave those weak Mizraim people. Let's enslave them. And that's what they did. They took them captives and brought them to Pathros, which was owned by Cush at the time. And Yah punished the children of Cush for doing this because the Egyptians are his people. And finally, we see in Isaiah that the Egyptians are chosen. So you messing with the Egyptians, you messing with his people. So, but even though the Egyptians are his people, they are now the poorest people on earth. This whole area, Pathros, including the islands, some of the islands, but mostly from Costa Rica on down through Panama to Colombia. There's a place called Choco, Colombia. It's the state of Colombia. And it's filled with black people. It's got more blacks than anywhere else in North America that's concentrated into one area. Like even Mississippi or Alabama, this is more concentrated. This is just like Haiti. But you see that both Haiti and Colombia, very poor nations, base kingdoms. Because Haiti was originally inhabited by the Hittites, but but the ha the Haitians are also descendants. A lot of the Haitians are also descendants of the the uh, the Misri the Misris. A lot of the Haitians are descendants of the Misris that came from Pathros. You understand? So they are now a base kingdom as well. There's a lot of Yasrali people in Haiti, but uh, at the end of the day, it's a lot of. Hittites and mysteries in Haiti as well. If you look at Haiti, it's not all poor. There's actually high class Negroes in Haiti. And I believe those are the children of Yasserol because if you look at children of Yasserol, we are a cursed nation, but we are never a base nation. We are we were never a base nation. Even in the midst of our curses, we were in the midst of our blessings as a nation, which is the most beautiful thing about the nation of Yasserol. Drugs, violence, is an all-time high. Uh, rape is an all-time high. Street gang violence is an all-time high. Higher in this area than anywhere else. There's no streets, no roads. Everywhere is a river. This land is full of rivers, full of rainforest. It's hard to get from one place to another. It's full of swamps. It's full of uh, horrible disease, and insects, and poisonous uh, frogs of all sorts. It's horrible, man. And, and and a lot of these people just live in, in like, like literally, I don't know what the slums, they, they mostly live in slums in this area. Not just any slum, not the kind of slum you see in Detroit or Chicago. Like, you, the, the stuff you see here is worse than the stuff you see here. Seriously. Okay, the inflation is at an all-time high. Like, it's, it's, it's honestly crazy. And you see those people, a lot of them look just like us. A lot of them look very hermetic, right? That's the Mitzvahs. Pathros is an area of the Israelite diaspora. If you read um, Isaiah 11 11, it's a place that we are supposed to be in this day as well. 
there's a lot of Israelites in this area as well, but they are doing better. They are doing better financially than the Mitzri. That's why it's a division in classes in all these areas. You got to see it. One day, the word of Yahuwah is going to reach Pathros. It has already reached Assyria and Mizraim. It has already reached all the coasts of Cush toward the east. It has already reached the islands of the European Sea as well as the islands of the Egyptian Sea. It's already reached uh, Shinar and Elam. It's already reached Hamath. It's already reached, you know, a lot of these places. But one place it still hasn't reached is Pathros and Western Kush for some strange apparent reason. But it's going to get there really soon. All right.